Hello, and welcome back, adventurers. Get comfy as we explore the history of the domain called Mordent. Mordent has one of the best preserved histories of all the regions, but it is a history where local legends are treated as venerated truths, and one does not research the history of the land as much as trace back the noble families that once ruled it and follow their decline into tragedy. Although precise genealogical records are maddeningly elusive, I have learned that Morden was once host to ten ruling families, although of these great houses only the Weathermay family line remains intact at present. Before any of the known families arrived, however, Mordenshire itself was settled at least 600 years ago, a remote and nameless fishing hamlet at the natural cove of Arden Bay. About 180 brave and Callan do so, following wars and conquests fought in lands long since nameless and banished, Notable adventurer Jacques Renier sailed in the region with his family. He assumed control of the hamlet and started expanding it. When the village at last began attracting sea trade and prosper, he celebrated by building a grand fortified manor for his family just outside of town, what is now known as the House on the Griffin Hill. According to the legend whispered to this day, something went terribly wrong with Griffin Manor on the first day of construction. Accidents and misfortune plagued the building, resulting in death, permanent maiming, and in one case even blindness of one of the workers. Rainier refused to admit that anything was the matter and even refused to allow an exorcism. He moved in with great style early one autumn. One night in the middle of winter, he and his family fled the manor with nothing more than the clothes on their backs, swearing never to return. They refused to disclose what had prompted their escape and forbid the servants from talking either. Although embarrassed by the nature of his eviction, Rainier recovered quickly and ordered a second mayor, Heather House, to be constructed on the southern border, now known as Weathermay Point. Eventually, ten families were drawn into the region with promises of prosperity and opportunity. They asserted themselves as the primary landholders and business leaders of the realm, plunging Rainier family into obscurity. Modern society began to stabilize into two classes, the high newcomers and low commoners. I should also know that Griffin Manor remained shunned throughout the years. Once a generation or so, a different noble would dismiss the tales and move in, only to flee inevitably not long after. A different fate greeted the Godfroys. Easily the wealthiest and most influential of the old ruling families, they took the Griffin Manor as their primary residence. Firm believes in the noblesse of Leech, it was Godfroys who largely introduced and encouraged the practice of aristocratic families working alongside the folk of their lands in daily life, a practice that seems to have outlasted them as it remains common to this day. A curious mania for power periodically plagued the line as the years passed, eventually reducing family numbers until only one bloodline remained. Indeed, the line's most famous member is the last scion of the family, Lord Wilfred Godfroy, who killed himself in the house on New Year's Day in 579 BC following the tragic deaths of his wife and daughter. Nearly all Morantish folk hold to legends that their land was brought into this one from another place, due to the disastrous results of a failed experiment conducted by a person known only as the alchemist. Though the exact nature of this experiment is lost to superstition, the Morantish also widely believed that this disaster was largely due to the operation of the apparatus, a device so terrible its very purpose is unknown. It is believed that following the death of Lord Godfroy, the Weathermay family rented Griffin Manor to a visiting noble who desired intense privacy for his experiments. Numerous folk tales simply call him the Alchemist, but one document appears to have been signed by one Strut von Zarevich. This led me to an interesting bit of information contained in the Alchemist's journal. If it is to be believed, Count Strat was an intelligent and kind, repulsed by dark urges he experienced throughout his life. In his arrogance, he devised a way of his soul to be split in two, and his wicked half to be cast out. Most bizarre of all, he appeared to be successful, casting his dark brother into a nebulous other realm where he became a warlord of Barovia, while the alchemist married Lady Virginia Weathermay. Later records were impossible for me to track down, but the locals whispered that the apparatus was used again in October of 579 Barovian calendar and the wave of madness swept through the domain. Many local scholars say that such prominent figures like Strat von Zarevich and Aslin Rex themselves were involved, but to what end, none can say. Heroes from the unknown lands came and saved the remaining good people of Mordent, but that in return thrusted the domain into Ravenloft. 
Despite the difficulties of research in Mordant, I have managed to uncover a certain amount of information about some of the noble families that I feel is reliable and which I would like to share with you. The Viscott family resided in their manor, northeast of Mordenshire, a little east of Mill Road, in 643 Borough and Calendar, an arranged marriage was imposed upon Burton Viscott and Anne Campbell, that has immigrated to Mordant in the prior decades and that had somewhat tense relations with the Viscotts. On the night of the marriage, the Burton's bride-to-be was involved in the death of Michael Viscott, Burton's brother. Shortly thereafter, she was changed into a bog by Burton's hounds. There she drowned but not before cursing Burton to an eternity of suffering. Later, he in fact lived for over a century, haunted by the ghost of the woman and witnessed the bogs devour his estate. In 743, Burton saw the intervention of adventurers. They were able to break the curse, putting hereby an end to Burton's life, the Wescott's family and the haunting of the great moor by Burton's bride-to-be. Another unsettling set of circumstances came to light while I was investigating the dreadful reports surrounding the vanished Scott Matter family. The family used to be known by their hard work and ability to produce true works of art. Of the last generation of the family, most notable were Lord Andrew and his sister Lady Margaret, who became skilled painters of portraits and landscapes, respectively. Unfortunately for the family as a whole, the siblings work captured the attention of a young gentleman known simply as Lord Siffington Grey. He had managed to find his way into one of the dinner parties that Scott Matters held. Exactly what transpired at the party is unknown, save that when the family had not emerged the next morning and a party was sent to investigate. They said to have found lone Lord Grey looking at the portrait of the whole Scott Matter family before entering the portrait himself. The only family still alive today is Weathermay family. Of them, the most notable include twins Jennifer and Laurie Weathermay Foxgrove and George Weathermay, legendary crusader against creatures of the night. Jennifer and Laurie remain in Mordenshire to this day, running the herbalist shop opened by no less than a famed hunter and family friend, Rudolf van Richten, whom the twins idolized during their childhood and whose heroic efforts they now seek to emulate in their war against the minions of darkness. Thank you so much for your time, patient listeners. Morden's history is full of misery, and I hope by knowing it, we can avoid it. But for now, as always, take care while crossing the mists.